So welcome to Signals and Systems. I really hope you will enjoy this series of lectures. We'll be starting with an introduction to signals and systems. So by considering motivating examples of both one-dimensional and two-dimensional signals, as well as systems that we encounter in biomedical engineering and imaging sciences. So here we have a few examples. Um, on the left here, we have an ECG trace. Um, that's for looking at the heart. And what you'll measure there will be a voltage, V, that varies with time. And so that's what's shown on this trace. Or in a similar fashion, we could look at the brain and do an EEG. And so there we get a set of uh, traces, which are again voltages as a function of time T. So that's two examples of 1D signals. Uh, in the case of medical imaging, if we were to consider magnetic resonance imaging or fMRI, functional MRI, then we could look at uh, the change in the bold signal as a function of different scans where we might have different conditions that we're looking at. Um, but the point to note here is that we've got various 1D signals that are of interest. Uh, some more examples on this slide. Uh, we could go beyond the field of biomedical engineering and consider, for, for example, the, the stock market. Um, there we have one-dimensional functions such as price of a stock as a function of day or as a function of time. And so that will also trace out a 1D function. Um, we could also consider audio signals such as speech. And so here I've got amplitude A as a function of time. And again, that's tracing out this 1D signal, this, this 1D function. Uh, going back to the world of medical imaging, uh, my particular research area is positron emission tomography. And so often we look at uh, the concentration of a radio tracer. So that's a C as a function of time in a particular region of interest. So yet again, more examples of 1D signals that are encountered in practice. Moving on from 1D to 2D, um, again, medical imaging here, we have an example of case-based data in magnetic resonance imaging, uh, which we can use to reconstruct MR images. And this is an example of a T1-weighted MR image. And so both of those are examples of two-dimensional signals. Uh, moving back again to positron emission tomography, this is an example of some measured PET data. Again, it's a two-dimensional function, a two-dimensional signal, from which uh, we uh, reconstruct, for example, here a slice of a PET image, and so that's showing a cross-section through a brain um, for when we've injected furodeoxyglucose to look at glucose metabolism. But 2D signals, 2D functions appear all over the place, just showing, for example, here, even a photo taken with my phone here. Um, again, that's a two-dimensional function where we've got an RGB, if you like, a, a vector value for each uh, position, uh, X and Y, that makes up that, that photograph. Or even this slide that we're looking at right now is an example of a 2D signal, where again, we've got an X and Y coordinate and some um, intensity, some grayscale value if it's a black and white slide. So those are examples of signals in 1D and 2D. Um, but what are the systems? The systems are um, basically what measure those signals or look at those signals and modify or change them in some way. So, for example, um, when recording audio, you'd use a, a microphone. So you have a, an input signal of the, the pressure variations in the sound. And that goes through a whole series of processes to deliver some output signal. So all the various processing that goes on between two signals, we can regard as a system. Um, so it could be as simple as a microphone or maybe going from 1D now to 2D signals, we could have a webcam where we're now uh, obtaining um, not just a 2D signal, but also a time varying 2D signal. So again, a webcam, for example, would be therefore an example of a system. Uh, back to medical imaging, we've got an MR scanner example here, uh, again, where you have a subject in the field of view. Um, and so you're examining that subject, that subject is effectively a, a signal that you're measuring with the scanner. Um, to deliver case-based data. And again, with, with PET, uh, with the injected radio tracer, you've got some distribution of the radio tracer in the field of view, and then we're measuring that using a PET scanner, which is an example of a system. So those are kind of hardware examples I've shown there from the kind of very cheap hardware from a microphone and a webcam, right up to examples of medical imaging scanners, which can cost many millions of dollars. So 
all hardware examples. But on the bottom of the slide here, I've also shown an example of a software system where we might put in, for example, this is a, a deep learning um, architecture, which takes in measured pet data, uh, runs it through this uh, convolutional neural network to produce a reconstructed image. So we've still got the concept of a 2D signal going in and a 2D signal coming out. And it's the, the process in the middle that we are calling a system. And so I'm sure you'll appreciate with just these few examples that systems largely cover most measurements or most algorithms that we will ever implement. So uh, these lectures then uh, are all about equipping you with a mathematical framework that you're going to need to understand those 1D and 2D signals, um, how to analyze those signals, how to process them. And what I mean by processing, that would be, for example, modifying them, uh, restoring them, doing inverse problems, recovering um, a, a desired signal from a signal that you measured. So we're going into a lot of detail on those kinds of examples. Um, and if you can grasp uh, the key mathematics in signals and systems, you'll find that this is an excellent foundation for understanding a whole wide range of areas uh, in biomedical engineering and imaging sciences. So for example, here I've just listed image processing, image reconstruction, inverse problems. So many of the issues that come up with medical imaging, all the problems there, loads of them can be considered in a signals and systems framework. Um, audio DSP, digital signal processing, again, that's all about signals and systems. Right through to, again, the software example I mentioned on the previous slide, artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning. These are, these are software-based systems, architectures, which um, you, you supply a signal to and then they generate some signal output. As well as back to hardware, electronic circuits can also be considered as systems where you input some signal, goes through the system and it generates some output signal. So what is a signal? Um, so it's really a very broad definition. Here I'm saying it's uh, something that carries information and um, we can express that mathematically as a function. And we know that mathematically a function is something that gives you some value, some measurement, some number, which depends on some independent variable. So as an example, with what we've just been seeing, um, the measured values could be voltage, could be pressure, uh, could be concentrations. So those would apply to the case of the ECG trace, uh, the sound uh, example, or concentration could be for the PET signal. And so those measured values um, will vary uh, with time or vary with position. And so this whole notion of an independent variable of a function is often to do with what we choose by our own design. So you know, we decide when measurements are made. So we're in control of the temporal or the time independent variable. We're often very much in control of where measurements are made, you know, the, the spatial coordinates. So with an imaging device, we often design the detectors, and so we know where those detectors are looking. And so we are choosing the spatial locations that are being imaged. Um, and so again, the point to note is that the signal we measure usually depends in some way on independent variables. Well, it always depends on ind independent variables. It's just that most of the time, these independent variables tend to be time and or space. And then when we've got this idea then of a signal or a function, um, what we'll be realizing is that um, it will be very useful to represent those functions in different ways according to the kind of problem uh, that we're wishing to solve. If we're doing reconstruction, we might represent the signal one way, or if we're doing um, DSP, we might represent uh, the signal in a different way. It all depends on the task. So a system then, mathematically, uh, is a mapping. You, you supply it with some uh, function, it does some processing on that, and it produces a new function. And so in the very general sense, we're gonna call that an operator. So here I'm showing in this diagram some uh, function f of x. And so here I'm assuming this is some kind of a continuous function of the uh, spatial position x. Goes through 
a system, which I'm going to represent here just by some operator, some S with some curly braces there to indicate it's an operator. And what we get out the other side is a different function g of x, which is equal to that operator operating on that input function f of x. So very simple general construct there. And the point being that system could have modified, could have changed, could have processed or attempted to transmit uh, that input signal. So I'll give you an example now um, in the context of PET imaging. Um, here, the input signal would have come from an injected radio tracer inside a patient that would have, the patient would be inside the PET scanner. Um, we get radioactive emissions from the patient. These get detected by the PET scanner, which is the system in this context, and it will output some signal. We get measured data out the other side. So here we're really dealing with a continuous function, the, the, the very uh, finely sampled distribution in space and time of radio tracer, and we're getting some discrete measured data the other side of that. Um, and then another system would be we could take that discretely sampled measured data as now an input signal to a reconstruction algorithm. So even our reconstruction algorithm is a system, which in turn will output a different signal. So this is going to be a 3D set of images, would be the output from a reconstruction algorithm in PET. Then we might do analysis, for example. And so even the analysis stage is viewed as another system. So we'd put in our 3D PET image, do some analysis, for example, here that would be looking at a region of interest in the brain and looking at the time course of uptake of the radio tracer in that region in the brain from which we can uh, infer some kind of functional information for some kind of diagnosis for that patient. So here the output signal is just the 1D function G of T, where T is time and G is the, the time activity curve, so in fact the activity. So there, that was just to give you some motivating examples of just how far and wide this concept of signals goes from 1D to 2D, and of course, to many higher dimensions as well, um, throughout biomedical engineering and imaging sciences. And then also to give you some motivating examples of various systems. You know, they could be hardware, they could be software, they could be very low cost devices, very high cost devices, um, but all of those very important components are captured in the mathematics of signals and systems. So I really hope that you will be very motivated to study this subject, gain a lot of understanding, which will really equip you with what you need to go into a greater understanding of uh, measurement in, in imaging sciences, biomedical engineering. Thank you.